Um, all right. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order at 10.56 a.m. Um, this meeting of the zoning administrator. Um, as a result of hate speech from online commenters during recent local public meetings, the City Council is limiting public comments at all virtual public meetings to in-person or written comments received prior to the meeting. Um, so the second item on the agenda is public comment. We are now taking public comments on item two, non-agenda matters. This is the time when any person may address matter matters not listed on this agenda, but are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the zoning administrator. Um, if you are attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Okay, not seeing any comments, I will close the public comment period. Uh, moving on to item three, zoning administrator business. Um, the zoning administrator is appointed by the planning and economic development director and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the design review board, cultural heritage board, planning commission, or city council as applicable to the decision. All actions taken by the zoning administrator may be appealed within 10 calendar days. If the final day of the appeal period falls on a non-business day, the appeal period will be extended to the next business day. So the administrator uh, appears to have been over script that I gave you and we need to do the approval of minutes. Oh. Uh, um, draft minutes from September 7th. Okay. So, the agenda item. so I will, uh, oops. The, what item is that? Three, four? It is on 2.1 of the agenda. Oh, um, item going back to item two, um, review of the September 7th, 2023 minutes. Um, I will be approving those minutes. Um, and then back to item four point or item five is our scheduled items. So we are now moving into our first scheduled item which is a public meeting for JM and IC LLC conditional use permit. And the project presenter is planner Suzanne Hartman. Can we have a staff report, please? Thank you, Zoning Administrator McKay. My name is Suzanne Hartman and I am presenting the minor conditional use permit application. Uh, the project planner is Monet. The project address is 3075 Coffee Lane. And this is a for a for approval of a minor conditional use permit for an approximately 3,000 square foot cannabis cultivation nursery within an existing industrial building. This is an aerial view of the uh, parcel and it is surrounded by various uses um, including low density residential neighborhood um, and then also some light industrial and general commercial buildings neighboring the site. The zoning district is light industrial and the general plan land use designation for the site is general industry. The light industrial zoning district is applied to areas appropriate for some light industrial uses, as well as commercial service uses and activities that may be incompatible with residential, retail, or office uses. Residential uses may also be accommodated as part of a workflow project. This is the site plan. There won't be any exterior changes uh, proposed um, as all of the work it will take place inside the industrial building. And the parking spaces on the site are sufficient for the proposed use and no additional spaces will be needed. And additionally, the adjacent unit has already received approval for similar campus uses. This is the proposed floor plan.
And these are some photos of the building exterior. We're seeing that. Uh... Thanks. These are the general operating requirements. The applicant submitted an odor mitigation plan, which has been certified by a licensed engineer. And the plan ensures that all mitigation controls are effective in reducing odors from all sources. Additionally, the project has a security plan in place to prevent raptor diversion of cannabis, as well as to discourage loitering and crime. The project is required to obtain a building or obtain building and fire permits for the building and fire code requirements for cannabis related occupancies. The project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for two categorical exemptions under CEQA guidelines, section 15301 and 15303, in that the proposed use will be within an existing facility with the installation of small new equipment and the conversion of a small structure from one use to another, involving, involving negligible expansion of the existing use. Additionally, the site is zoned for such and for such use and does not involve significant amounts of hazardous substances and all necessary public services and facilities are available and the surrounding area is not environmentally sensitive. So in conclusion, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the zoning administrator by resolution approve a minor conditional use permit for the property located at 3075 Coffee Lane, Sweet B. Thank you. Great. Um, is the applicant in attendance and do they wish to make any presentation or comments? Yes, I'm here. Um, no comment. Thank you. Um, I do not have any questions at this time. At, um, at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing for this project. Um, if you're attending in per the meeting in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Zoning Administrator, there are no hands raised. Great, thank you. Um, so yeah, I've reviewed the narrative and the description and the, and the floor plan um, for consistency with the zoning code and general plan policies. I think this is a pretty sensible use for an industrial building of this nature. Um, I appreciate the, the planner's presentation and um, the analysis that went into the, the creation of the resolution. Um, the I'd like to also note that in addition to the, the measures included in the odor control plan, um, the impact of that would result in no um, detectable odors from the outdoor space um, or from from the outdoors in the in the area of the site. So um, with that, I think that the operation of the use is compatible with the surrounding area and would not result in any um, negative impacts environmentally or any um, other impacts of that nature. So I will be approving the project. Thank you. Um, moving on to our second scheduled item, also a public meeting, uh, DISH wireless co-location of equipment. Um, presenting planner is Christian Candelaria. Uh, good morning, Zoning Administrator McClay. Before you today is the before you today is the co-location and expansion of the cell tower at Highway 12, 4900 Highway 12. Um, their project file number is DR23-001, and this is minor design review. The project planner was Kristen A. Dreams, and I'll be presenting for her today.
Uh, the minor design review before you today is for the co-location of three new antennas and six remote radio units on an existing monopline tower facility, resulting in a total height increase of 10 feet. Um, there is also a 35 square foot expansion of the existing fenced equipment enclosures with two new gates and installation of new concrete pad and an ice bridge, which I will show. Um, also letting you know that the increased height and excavation of the site is exempt from the current initial use permit process under section 6409 of the Middle Class Tax Relief from Job Creations Act and SEC guidelines 20-1532. Here is showing you the general plan and zoning for the area. Um, and then you can see the project site indicated with the star. Here you can see the proposed and existing elevation, sorry, photo of the monopine. And you can see the increase of the height. Here is another photo simulation of the site. Um, here is the site plan that is going on. Here you can see in the middle is where the pine is and you can see some of the um, extension of the site on this map, sorry, on this plan side. And this is part of it. And here's some additional <laughs> indicators of the location. <laughs> Um, and then here is an enlarged site plan. Um, as I told you earlier, there's going to be a proposed ice bridge. This is just for the um, staff to be able to walk across and do any type of changes they need to to the pine or any updates they need to do throughout its time there. Um, here are the elevations for existing and proposed. You can see the height increase as well. And some of the items that are being added to the bottom. This project is category exempt under Super Guidelines Section 15301. Um, and this does not have any substantial change of physical dimensions of the existing tower or ground station, resulting in a negligible ex expansion of the existing use. Um, I did want to mention that we actually did receive a public comment from the nearby veterinary practice. Um, they were concerned about the location of additional. Um, equipment being added at this location as they run a cell phone free business and they are particularly um, sensitive to EMF and they were hoping to have these placed elsewhere. I also wanted to mention that this project is also outside of the SEC shop clock guidelines and staff was working with the applicant about various resubmittals to make sure it could still come to the zoning administrator and they agreed to come to this meeting after the shot clock has ended. Um, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the zoning administrator approve a minor design of the permit to allow the co-location additions of various equipment and expansion of the fencing at existing telecommunication facility located at 4900 Highway 12. <clears throat> the presentation. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, is the applicant present and do they wish to make any comments? The applicant is on Zoom. I don't think they need to make any, but they might raise their hand. If you're if you're part of the applicant team and you would like to we have a hand raised. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, unmute yourself, please, and you may speak. Um, th hi, this is Sarah Neese. I'm the applicant. Sorry, I have my phone on, but I couldn't figure out how to raise my hand on there, so I'm trying to talk on Zoom. Um, I do not have a presentation, though. Just wanted to let you know. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, at this point, I'd like to open the public hearing for this project. Yeah. If you're in person would like to make a comment, please raise your hand. Seeing no hands raised, there are no comments. Okay, I will close public comment. Um, yeah, so these are always interesting because there's a lot of state and federal requirements that are applicable to these types of um, projects. 
and um, and I completely understand the sentiment of the nearby business operator, um, especially if you're sensitive to these types of um, operations. Um, however, the site does the regulations applicable to the site do accommodate this type of project, and there is already an existing poll, and I appreciate when telecommunications corporations co-locate their equipment to avoid additional large monopoles throughout our city. And I also appreciate that um, we all use technology and are relying on technology, both for social and professional reasons, but also for emergency reasons. Um, so this type of expansion, while it may be um, not as attractive to look at, or to experience um, when nearby for some folks, it is definitely ne necessary um, for the reasonable uh, operation of our city. So um, I did actually have a question. What is what is the ice bridge? I've never heard of that <laughs> phrase or term before. Yeah, um, let me see if I can open this up again. Or if Sarah would like to speak again but let me see if I can bring this back up. So if you can see on the elevations, there's this little walk. It's basically a walkway. Um, it allows the person to access the monopine and also go across to the um, infrastructure on the bottom. So it's like an elevated catwalk, yeah. essentially. Yes. <laughs> OK, all right. That's an interesting way to describe that. Um, I appreciate that yeah. clarification. Um, I also recognize that while photo simulations can often show a best case scenario, from what I could see in this presentation, it does appear that the addition is going to be screened in a way that looks remotely similar to the nearby tree canopy. So I appreciate the um, attention to that on the applicant side as well. Um, so with that, I believe I support the findings made in the resolution and will approve the project. Um, as with the last decision and this decision, these are, um, subject to an appeal period. Like I just, I uh, discussed at the beginning of the meeting, um, 10 days, which I believe would be next, next Monday, October 16th, October 16th. Yes. 16. Thank you. By the end of business day. Um, all right. So moving on to our third scheduled item, which is presented by Planner Beesla and is um, a public meeting for Burger King exterior modifications, a design review request. Can we have a staff report, please? Okay. Good morning, Zoning Administrator McKay. Um, my name is 
nor Bisla, and this is a proposal for exterior modifications to the Burger King at 741 Stony Point Road. Um, the proposal is to do an exterior remodel, a complete facade update, and add a double lane drive, double drive through entry lane as opposed to the current single lane that exists there now. Here is a Here's an aerial view of the site. It is um, off of Stony Point Road. And again, here's a neighborhood context map uh, close to Sebastopol Road and Highway 12. Yeah. The general plan land use designation for the site is retail and business services and it is in a planned development zoning district. This is the previous facade that existed. Um, there, the reason for the update is due to fire damage. Um, much of the building was uh, damaged in a fire. And this is what would, uh, what is being proposed now. Here's another rendering. And this is the update to the site plan, the, the double drive through lane you can see below. Previously, there was a single lane, um, and now they are proposing to extend the drive through. This does take away some of the parking spots that uh, existed here below. Um, but there is sufficient parking uh, within, within the site and there is a shared parking lot um, that they share with their neighboring business as well. Staff is able to make all of the required findings for design review. The updates to the drive-through lane uh, improve traffic circulation at the site and the design um, is compatible with neighboring uh, businesses as well. The project is categorically exempt from the California, California Environmental Quality Act as it involves minor modifications to an existing structure and the updates would not increase the intensity of the use. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review and no public comment has been received by staff. It is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor design review to allow exterior modifications for the Burger King at 741 Stony Point Road. And for any questions or comments, this is my contact information, and that concludes my presentation. Great, thanks. Can you uh, mute? Thank you, Planner Bisla. Um, is the applicant present and do they wish to make any comments? All right, Brandy, you're able to unmute and go ahead and speak. Hi, I'm, my name is Brandy. I'm the architect. I'm representing Sunny Guy. He's the franchisee and owner of this project. Uh, we don't have any comments on the conditions. Um, but if there's any questions, I'm here to answer them. Thank you, Brandy. Appreciate it. Um, at this point, I'd like to open the public comment period for this item. If anybody attending in person would like to make a comment, please raise your hand. Joining Administrator McKay, there are no comments. Great. Thank you. Um, overall, this is looks like a great project. Um, I appreciate the modernization of the architecture from the previous to the um, proposed. I will say this is probably one of the most attractive Burger Kings I've ever seen in my life. So um, one of those elevations was kind of giving me like outdoor, like recreation, um, retail shop vibes like REI. Um, um and i you know it's a big bummer that there was a fire that 
um, affected the um, building, but I'm glad that this was able to be kind of an opportunity for some some modernization of the architecture and it's consistent with what I see um, us moving for moving forward with as a city in terms of architecture. Um, I don't think I have any questions about the resolution and I appreciate the applicant representative being present and indicating that they approve with these conditions as well. Um, I'd also like to note that while there's a good amount of signage on what we just saw in the presentation, um, any approval of this design review does not um, include approval of signage and that signs would be subject to our sign ordinance in the zoning code and require separate planning and building permits. Um, with that, I don't think I, oh, I'll close public comment as well. Um, with that, I don't believe I have any questions and I approve this project. Uh, moving on to the fourth item a public meeting for window modifications, a uh, landmark alteration request. Planner Visla uh, to present as well. Thank you, Zoning Administrator McCain. Um, the proposal before you is for exterior modifications to the McNulty residence at 642 Oak Street. The proposal is to remove some side yard windows and fill the space with siding to match, uh, as well as replace a window with front doors and replace a back door with a window. Uh, additionally, there will be replacement of some more vinyl windows with fiberglass windows and all of the trim to go in will match the original. Here's the aerial view of the site, as well as a neighborhood context map. Uh, it is located in the Burbank, uh, Luther Burbank Gardens Preservation District. Um, the general plan land use designation is low density residential, and it is in a plan development district, uh, as well as the historic combining district. Uh, so here is the proposed floor plan. Um, the reason for the two windows on the west elevation over here to be removed is uh, due to some interior remodels uh, going on over here. So these are the two windows that will be removed and filled with siding. This is the uh, back door that will be removed and replaced with a single hung window. Um, this single hung window will be replaced um, to look the same, but it will be a fiberglass window. There is a window right here that will be replaced by a French door. And then these three windows as well um, will be replaced to look similar, similar to the current vinyl windows, but they will be replaced with fiberglass. You can see the changes proposed for the east elevation here. Here's the French door going in. Um, and these three windows will be replaced with fiberglass. Here in the back, the door here will be replaced with a single hung window um, and the rest will be filled with siding. And the west elevation over here, you can see the two windows going away and being filled with siding. Staff is able to make all the, all the required findings for a landmark alteration. Um, the exterior changes are consistent with the original architecture and the, um, the proposal includes um, the preservation of original materials.
The project also meets all of the standards for rehabilitation um, as laid out by the Secretary of the Interior's Standards for Historic Preservation. Um, as mentioned before, the trim, any windows that currently have original trim that will be preserved and any windows that uh, have trim that is different from the original, the trim will be replaced to uh, match the original. This project is categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act as it involves minor modifications to an existing structure. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review. At the time of creating this presentation, no public comment had been received, um, but staff has received written correspondence in support of the project from a neighbor. It is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor landmark alteration to allow exterior modifications at 642 Oak Street. And for any questions or comments, this is my contact information. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is the applicant Present and do they wish to make any comments? Um, we are present, but we have no comment at this time. Cool. Thanks for being here. Um, at this point, then I will open the public comment for this project. Does anybody in, uh, attending in person have any public comments? If so, please raise your hand. Zoning administrator, there are no public comments. Cool. I will close public comment. Um, yeah. So. I did have one question on the elevation where the windows are being removed and then siding is being replaced there. Is that on the elevation, it looked like or just like a black box. Is that a pop out? No, it's uh, just kind of a factor of the program that we used to create it, but it would be uh, <clears throat> kind of feathered in to the it would blend in with the, it's not a pop out, it's just being replaced in the same plane as okay. all the other siding. So it just be like smooth. Be blended to okay. match okay. and, you know, extend, uh, yeah, come naturally. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, and I think that mm, sometimes vinyl material isn't like the favorite for um, uh, historic preservation districts, but the fact that that's not on a um, publicly facing um, elevation, I think, kind of works for this project. Um, I appreciate the care that goes into maintaining the historic nature of properties in historic preservation districts, and I appreciate um, collaboration between city staff and applicant representatives and property owners. Um, to navigate this process because um, it's an important process and um, I think we should we should remember that. Um, I appreciate the analysis um, for compliance with the standards outlined by the um, Secretary of the Department of the Interior. Um, and I also appreciate the construction hours being limited to eight from eight to six. Because uh, this is a residential area and it's important to um, be a good neighbor when you're doing construction projects. Um, with that, I don't think I have any further comments or questions, and I approve the project. Um, that moves on, that moves us to item seven adjournment, and I adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.